Skoda Kodiak review. Our rating. 5 star. The new Skoda Kodiak SUV is an impressive all-rounder. It's practical, solid, strong value and good to drive, a winning combination. 4. Practical, nice to drive, good value, great interior. Against. Firm ride on some models, base models are 5 seat only. Skoda has done it again with the new Kodiak SUV. Following in the footsteps of the excellent Superb and with a huge weight of responsibility on its shoulders, the Kodiak has lived up to expectations. It covers all the bases by not only being comfortable, practical, and good to drive, but it's also cheap to run, easy to live with and solidly built. By offering a wide range of trim levels and a variety of punchy and smooth petrol and diesel engines, the Kodiak should be on the shopping list of those after space on a budget or, further up the range, those wanting premium levels of equipment and comfort. The option of front or four-wheel drive only increases its broad appeal. Our choice. Skoda Kodiak 2.0 TDI 150 SE Manual. The Kodiak isn't Skoda's first SUV, but it is the largest. Following in the footsteps of the successful five-seat Yeti, the Kodiak is the brand's first foray into the popular midsize SUV sector. It's also beaten sister car makers VW, Porsche, and seat to the seven-seat SUV game. Not only this, but it looks likely to be the model that spearheads Skoda's long-awaited entrance into the US car market alongside the Superb in the next few years. That makes it one of the most important cars in Skoda's recent history. It's no surprise then, given the ingredients, that it's also a rather good one. The Skoda Kodiak has now arrived in showrooms and it undercuts every similarly sized SUV on the market, including the Ford Edge, Kia Sorento, Nissan X-Trail, and Hyundai Santa Fe. However, buyers who wish to spend more to get extra performance or equipment are also able to so. Underneath, it's based on the same MQB platform that underpins the VW Tiguan and C Ateca, though it has a longer wheelbase than both. Despite only being 40 mm longer than an Octavia, the Kodiak offers the choice of 5 seats and a huge boot or 7 seats. The engine range is possibly the most diverse in its class. Skoda lets you choose from a total of 3 engines and 5 outputs, whereas subs like the Kia Sorento offer only one engine choice. The base petrol engine is a 1.4 TSI 4-cylinder unit with 124 bhp, while that engine is also available with 148 bhp and cylinder deactivation tech. A 2.0-liter TSI petrol with 178 bhp sits at the top of the petrol lineup. The VW Group's familiar 2.0-liter 4-cylinder diesel also sees service in the Kodiak. There, it produces either 148 bhp or 187 bhp. Both petrol and diesel engines can be mated to a 6-speed manual and 6 or 7-speed DSG automatic. There's a mixture of front-wheel drive or four-wheel drive variants across the range, too, while more powerful petrols and diesels are expected to be added at a later date. Base S trim comes kit out with 17-inch alloys, a 6.5-inch touchscreen DAB radio, smart link phone connectivity, LED running lights and rear lights, keyless start, a leather steering wheel and electric heated mirrors. SE adds to that kit such as 18-inch alloys, an 8-inch touch screen with extra speakers, dual zone climate control, cruise control, parking sensors, auto lights and wipers and the option of 7 seats. Step up to SEL spec for things like 19-inch alloys, SAT NAV, full LED headlights, heated Alcantara seats, keyless entry, and an electric bootlet. Top spec edition brings special polished alloys, chrome roof rails, electric leather seats, lane keep assist and wireless smartphone charging. Engines, performance, and drive. 4.5 star. The Kodiak has an engine to suit every need, while it handles well for an SUV and the ride is controlled. One of the best in the class. Buyers of larger subs like the Kodiak are unlikely to be too interested in how it handles bends at speed, 
but it's reassuring to know the big Skoda offers a very good ride and handling balance on the whole. Combine that with the strong performance and decent refinement of the engines, and it's got potential to be a class leader. This should come as no surprise, given our favorite five-seat SUV is currently the Seat Ateca, which shares its platform with the Skoda underneath. The Kodiak doesn't quite offer the sporty, agile handling of its Spanish sister, but it's still an enjoyable drive for a car of this type thanks to decent body control, a slick gear shift and accurate, if a touch too light, steering. Only in really fast cornering do you notice the extra weight of the Kodiak's bigger body and seven seats. Of more interest to buyers is the ride, and there is a proviso with this. We've tried Kodiaks with the optional dynamic chassis control, but without it fitted the SUV isn't quite as adept at handling bumps. It's still well controlled and less fidgety than a Nissan X-Trail, but sharp bumps can occasionally intrude and it feels a little firm in town. With dynamic chassis control fitted normal mode is a good compromise between agility and comfort, with comfort mode making it too floaty and sport mode making it unsettled over rough roads. We've yet to try a Kodiak with the larger 19-inch wheels fitted, which could upset the ride. As subs go, however, it's a comfortable car. It's also very refined, with only a little wind noise from the mirrors and little in the way of road noise to speak of. Engines If you really want to stick to the Kodiak's cheap starting price you'll be in the 124BHP 1.4 TSI. It'll likely feel pretty underpowered in the big Skoda, though, so we'd recommend upgrading to the 148BHP version. With 250nm of torque it's reasonably punchy and pulls well for its size. We'd expect it to feel less zesty yet just about adequate with 5 kids and a load of luggage on board, however. Its real selling point is refinement, as at idle you'd barely know it was on and it only gets raucous above 4,500 rpm. It'll be a great choice for town dwellers or those doing low miles. The vast majority of Kodiak buyers are expected to plump for a diesel, though, and we'd recommend doing the same, the 148BHP 2.0 liter offers plenty of performance for most needs, and a gutsy 340nm of torque means it'll handle being heavily laden with a family, or towing, better than the petrol. The 187BHP diesel is even swifter and more refined as it doesn't need to be revved as much, but it costs more to buy as it's only available on high-spec models. MPG, CO2 and running costs. 4.3 star. The Kodiak is capable of up to 5.6 MPG, making it one of the more frugal 7-seat subs. Insurance costs are impressively low, too. The Skoda Kodiak isn't just one of the cheapest seven-seaters to buy, it should also prove to be one of the most cost-effective to run. While the flagship variants are thirstier and can get expensive, keep things sensible with a mid-spec variant and you can have your cake and eat it. The most efficient model in the range is the DSG-equipped 2.0 TDI 150 diesel, for now there's no ultra-frugal green line model offered yet. It's capable of 56.5 mpg on the claimed combined cycle and emits 131 g slash km of CO2, numbers that put it on a PAR with a lesser powered 1.6 liter Nissan X-Trail and ahead of the Hyundai Santa Fe. Add four-wheel drive to that and you'll be looking at 49.6 mpg and 149 g slash km, while switching to a manual gearbox makes it 51.4 mpg combined and 141 g slash km. The more powerful diesel claims 49.6 mpg combined, which is barely any worse. The entry-level petrol engine with 124bhp manages a decent claimed 53.3 mpg combined and emits 139g slash km. Stepping up to the 148bhp version reduces that to 44.8 mpg and 143g slash km, while adding four-wheel drive brings that down to 39.8 mpg and 163g slash km. The flagship 2.0 TSI petrol claims 38.2 mpg combined and emits 170g slash km of CO2. Insurance groups. Provisional insurance groups for the Kodiak make it look considerably cheaper than the competition. 
The base 1.4 TSI starts from Group 1 e which is 5 less than the most basic Nissan X-Trail. Even the top spec 2.0 TDI 190 slips in at Group 20. That should mean decent savings, particularly for younger buyers. Depreciation Residual value figures for the Kodiak have yet to be released, but we expect it to do at least as well as the Superb in terms of holding its value second-hand. Expect the petrols to retain around 40% of their value after three years, while the diesels should fare even better. Interior, Design, and Technology 4.5 Star The Kodiak's cabin is typical Skoda, solidly built, easy to operate and versatile. It looks smart on the outside, too. After years of producing rather nondescript vehicles, Skoda proved it can do stylish with models such as the Yeti and Superb. The Kodiak can be added to that list it's not radical or groundbreaking to look at in any way, but it has an understated class to it that belies its price tag. The front end is heavily inspired by the Superb, with a sharp dual headlight design made to look like Czech crystals. It's got a far more angular stance than the smaller Yeti SUV, too, while details like the prominent grille, clamshell bonnet, and high waistline give it true SUV presence. At the back. There's Skoda's now trademark styling line slicing the bootlet in two, and squared off tail lights. Full LED headlights are optional on all trim levels and standard on higher end models, and add another element of class to the Kodiak. They also include Audi-style scrolling LED indicators, although even base models come with LED daytime running lights and LED tail lights. Lesser trims make do with 17-inch alloy wheels, which do look a bit small in the wheel arches, although step up to SE spec and above and you'll get 18-inch items with optional 19-inch alloys to give it that butch SUV look that buyers crave. Base S models also look a bit basic with black plastic mirror housings and door handles, though SE gets body-colored items. Chrome window trim, colored UV insulating glass, while anodized silver roof rails mark out top models. Inside, the design is a mixture of familiarity and new. The wood-like inlays covering the dash won't be to all tastes, but they do make the Kodiak feel more upmarket than something like a Nissan X-Trail. There's a chunky center console with just the right amount of buttons and switches, while the focal point on higher spec models is the new 8-inch Bolero touchscreen with a glossy black fascia and touch-sensitive buttons. The design is a step on from the Superbs. It's a shame that Skoda isn't bringing in the VW Group's virtual cockpit digital instruments until next year, although the standard dials are clear and crisp. Quality in general is good, too in fact the Kodiak isn't far off the level of upmarket sheen found in higher-end VW models now. Plastics are largely solid and plush throughout, while details like fabric-lined door bins and soft-touch materials help to make you forget that the Kodiak is considerably cheaper than something like a Land Rover Discovery Sport. The layout is thoughtful and intuitive, with clearly labeled buttons and touchscreen functions all where you expect them to be. SAT NAV and Infotainment Technology is another area where the Kodiak stands head and shoulders above rivals. First off, there's a new generation of infotainment debuting on the SUV before it filters down into other Skoda models in the range. Lesser models make do with a 6.5-inch screen, but step up to SEL and you'll find a bright, crisp 8-inch Bolero system, optional on lesser trims. Both models get a DAB radio, Bluetooth, and connectivity tech such as Apple CarPlay, Android Auto and Mirror Link. However, the latter also comes with SAT NAV and a phone box that incorporates wireless smartphone charging in front of the gear lever. The Bolero touchscreen also features a new Skoda Connect service. It offers two services, Infotainment Online offering real-time traffic updates and map changes, and Care Connect, an emergency SOS call system in the event of an accident. The smartphone app it includes can also give you a status report on the car and even send SAT NAV instructions directly from your phone to the car. Practicality, Comfort, and Boot Space 4.5 Star 
as spacious and versatile as the class best, with a huge boot and a choice of five or seven seats. This is the area the Skoda Kodiak has to excel at to succeed and, thankfully, it largely does. It's not oversized on the road, yet it offers excellent levels of space for most passengers and a class-leading boot. Alongside the space on offer, visibility is very good. Skoda has resisted the urge to give the Kodiak a coupe-like rear end, that looks set come later with a Kodiak-based coupe SUV. Instead, the boxier design allows for a decent view out front, while every model comes with either parking sensors or a reversing camera so maneuvering into spaces isn't too hard for a car of this size. Storage is also excellent in the Kodiak. The front passenger has access to a center console bin, phone storage, a number of cup holders, plus two glove boxes a conventional one and one with a flip-up lid behind the wood-style dashboard panel. Rear passengers also have neat tray tables with built-in cup holders and lights. This being a Skoda, there's also a number of neat simply clever touches dotted about the cabin. These range from two small umbrellas hidden in the front doors, to plastic door protectors that pop out on the door edge to protect from car park dings. There's also a torch built into the boot, cup holders that hold bottles in place to let you open them on the move, an ice scraper, a bin for the driver's door and rear headrests that fold out to let you rest your head on the side. Size The Kodiak is exactly 4.7 m long, while it's 1,882 mm wide and 1,676 mm tall. Those figures are just a few millimeters longer, wider and shorter than the Hyundai Santa Fe, but the Kodiak's wheelbase is a considerable 91 mm longer. That means more passenger space but with very little effect on maneuverability. Surprisingly, though, the Kodiak is around 160 mm shorter than the Superb. Legroom, headroom, and passenger space. This wouldn't be a Skoda if it wasn't spacious. The Kodiak has tons of occupant space up front, while headroom is impressive in the rear, too. Legroom isn't quite as cavernous as the longer Superb even with the seat slid all the way back, but it's more than adequate. Children or young teenagers will find the third row of seats offers enough head and legroom, though that depends on whether the middle row has been reclined or slid forward. Adults won't have much fun back there, but you could argue that this class of car isn't designed to seat seven fully grown adults. Boot The Kodiak's boot is class leading there's no doubt about it. Five seat models have a whopping 720 liters back there, and that's before you've folded the seats down. Seven seat models reduce that to 630 liters with the third row folded down, although both of those figures are taken when the middle bench is slid as far forward as possible. Still, there's no arguing with an impressive 2,005 liters with all seats folded that trumps the X-Trail's 1,982 liter space and smashes the Hyundai Santa Fe's 1,680 liter load bay. With all seven seats in place, the Kodiak still has a very impressive 270 liters of boot space about the same as your average Super Mini. The Kodiak can tow up to 2,000 kilograms depending on the engine, which is competitive. Reliability and Safety 4.4 Star The Kodiak is impressively safe, while it should match the rest of the brand's range in offering great reliability. The Kodiak sits on the same MQB platform as first debuted on the Superb. It's also found in the Ateca and Tiguan, while almost all of the powertrains and technology are already found across the VW Group's architecture. While it's too early to say for sure, that part sharing should make the cars more reliable as any problems should have been identified on previous models. Skoda also has very high satisfaction ratings in our 2016 driver power survey, with five models in the top 25 cars out of those surveyed. Reliability and build quality scores are very good, too, meaning the Kodiak should be dependable and built to last. Although Euro NCAP has yet to test the Kodak for crash safety, we have every reason to believe that the model should get a full 5-star safety rating. The Superb on which it's based achieved that score, 
while a strong platform and raft of safety systems should make it one of the safest subs around. All Kodiaks come fitted with front assist and city emergency braking as standard, as you would expect. There is also blind spot detection, lane keep warnings and multi-collision braking. Optional, or standard on higher spec models, systems include adaptive cruise control, lane assist, trailer assist, predictive pedestrian protection, rear cross traffic alert and traffic sign recognition. Warranty. All Kodiaks come with a typical, but unremarkable, 3-year, 60,000 mile warranty as standard. Although there is the option to extend that to 5 years and have the mileage capped at 100,000 miles for additional peace of mind. Kia Sorento comes with 7 years of cover as standard, however, while the Hyundai Santa Fe gets 5 years of cover. Servicing Servicing costs have yet to be announced by Skoda, but we predict them to be roughly the same as the Superb, for that car it currently costs £139 for an intermediate, 10,000 mile, service and £259 for a full 20,000 mile service. Fixed price service plans will also be available in due course.